Hi and welcome to a new video. In my last video I tried to take a i7-6950X Broadwell E CPU apart basically to take die shots. Die shots is just taking a picture, close-up pictures of the die to show the structure of the CPU itself. Today we will do the same thing but with an i9-7980XE. I already have the CPU here in my hands. Thankfully a viewer sent the CPU to me. The CPU was already damaged so it's not like I'm wasting $2,000 but still it's actually a $2,000 CPU which we will take apart today. In the first step we have to delete the CPU and for that we will of course use my Delete Dimate X and that's what we will do now. I want to apologize in advance for using probably three adverts in this video but this video had quite high cost so I think I invested like 1500 to 2000 euro for this video only. Um, you will see later what I had to buy to make this video possible. So uh, yeah, sorry in advance for having so many adverts. So let's go over to step one. For step one we have to delete the CPU and for that we will use the Delete Dimate X. So yeah, that's what we will do now. So just take off the IHS of the CPU. So we will just take the CPU and use the Delete Dimate X for it. And you can already see that there's a whole part of the PCB missing on the CPU. So that's where the CPU got damaged. So we will just put the CPU in the Delete Dimate X according to the triangle and then delete the CPU. So in case you're wondering, this CPU was originally a pre-tested CPU from us from Case King. That's why there is liquid metal underneath the heat spreader. So now I have to take off the liquid metal, clean the CPU entirely from the liquid metal, also remove all the glue that is still around the die itself and then we will continue removing the die. So I cleaned the CPU completely from the residues of the liquid metal. I use usually acetone for this. Acetone works really really well if you want to get rid of some residues of liquid metal so if you want to uh, get rid of it try that next time. So I decided to leave the rest of the glue on the CPU. It shouldn't really be an issue as long as the glue is not higher than the core itself which doesn't look like it so I will now go outside on my balcony and put the CPU upside down on the heating plate. Last time I did that inside my room here and I noticed that the smell is really really bad and I think it's also not really healthy to uh, inhale some of the gases that come out of the PCB when it's like 400 plus degrees Celsius. So let's go outside on my balcony and do it there. The most important part when it comes about removing the dye is the temperature. So when I started doing this for the first time I thought I would need a temperature of around 350 to 360 degrees Celsius. But after trying this several times on several different chips I figured out that I need a temperature of around 420 to 450 or even 450, uh, 460 degrees Celsius. So on the 8700K, which I tried last week, it worked quite well with around 420 degrees Celsius. But this chip is really, really massive and also the package is quite big, so it takes up a lot of energy. And for this package, I think um, 420 to 450 degrees Celsius was a good starting point. So heating up the chip you can see it takes quite a bit of time and then you can see that some smoke um, comes out of the package and you can see some bubbles forming on the package itself. It's probably because of some humidity that is still catched inside the PCB. So once you notice that some of the bubbles are forming in the PCB it's time to take off the PCB from the heating element and then it's time to scratch off the underfill which is covering the edges of the die. You would usually only need like 250 to 300 degrees Celsius to just remove the chip from the package itself because that's the point where the solder should become liquid. But the issue is the underfill um, that's covering the edges of the die is really really strong and I noticed that you need at least 400 degrees Celsius to remove the glue. So what I'm doing is basically heating up the CPU and then using a knife to scratch off the, the glue on one side and putting it back on the heating element and doing that for several times until I removed all the underfill from all the sides. After removing the underfill from all sides I'm basically putting the CPU back and heating it up to 450-460 degrees Celsius. I left it there for I think three or four minutes. 
then I could eventually take off the die. It takes quite a lot of time actually until the CPU is getting hot enough that you can take off the die. And I'm also always very careful because the die is so extremely thin and if you put too, ma too much pressure with the knife onto the chip, it's so easy that you can crack it. So um, yeah, doing that just requires a lot of patience and time it took like th 30 minutes to take off the 7980XE die from the package, but eventually worked out. To analyze the die itself, I got me a USB microscope. This USB microscope is a DinoLite and with the stand it costs around 1000 euro. So that's one of the biggest investments I did for this video. The cool thing about this microscope is that you have the software you can, where you can do live analysis of everything that you can see and it has a variable zoom so you can zoom from 20 times to 220 times and 220 times zoom is actually quite a lot so we will be able to take a closer look at a lot of well very interesting structures inside the dial. Another very important feature of this microscope is the polarizer so in front we have a variable polarizer which we can use to uh, take a different look at different pictures so that helps quite a lot if you want to see um, some parts of the structure Especially, for example, if you want to take a look at the PCB itself, I did that in advance. I took a look at the RFID chip of the 7980XE and using the polarizer you can actually see the traces inside the PCB lighting up blue, which is usually not possible if you just take a normal picture with a camera. So before we take a closer look at the die itself, we will quickly take a closer look at the package. Currently we're taking a look at the package with a magnification of 15. So even with 15, it's fairly, fairly huge. So the package itself, you can see is, well, pretty much destroyed. Seems like there was a QR code before, which is interesting. Um, also on top, you can see a lot of capacitors and usually there are resistors here. Some of them are removed. You can see, well, package is pretty much damaged. If we go to the bottom right corner, you can see this is the area where, where the chip, where, well, the package was damaged before. That's the reason why CPU was damaged and now if we take a closer look into the center you can see that's a lot of contact pins that's usually the solder bumps that are connecting the CPU die with the package. If we flip the chip around you can also see there's a lot of capacitors in the middle well most of them got removed because it was simply too hot. We can now take quickly a closer look at some of those pads. So this is how the pad looks like and we can also do some measurements in this tool who can quickly check the dimensions of the pad. So we can see it's roughly 0.6 times 0.9 millimeter, which is really not much. And you can also see in the middle, there's one of those contact spots. This is what you usually see after connecting a CPU to the socket. And actually, if we, if we would use a CPU that got put into the socket uh, more often, I checked it before, I think it was a 7700K, you would see a much deeper and a bigger impact. Sometimes it gets even a little bit blackish, I think, which is um, due to the high current flowing through this point. So if we flip the chip again, we can take a closer look at the solder bumps, which usually connect the CPU die to the package. And we can still also use the measurement tool here and check the diameter of the solder bump. So you can see it's around 0.04 millimeter in radius, which equals 0.08 millimeter in diameter. And that's really, really extremely small. And now imagine that you have thousands of those on top of the package connecting the die to the package. So after taking a closer look at the package, we will now take a closer look at the die. And as you can see, the die does not fit entirely on here. It's currently 15 times magnified. You can, but you can see all those small connections, all those small solder bumps that are connecting the die usually to the package. And you can also see that there's a lot of residues on the chip. So should be a lot of the stuff from the underfill and also some solder residues, I think. But the good thing is that the, um, the die is entirely intact. It looks not damaged at all on any side. So that's a very good thing. So what we have to do now is take the die again and grind it down just to remove all the residues. I will use a 40 micrometer uh, diamond polishing fil a film to remove all those residues. And then we will check how the CPU looks after that. By the way, I'm taking pictures of everything I'm doing here, all the screenshots, which we will discuss in the video will also be available in the link in the description. Probably there will be even more pictures than what we will discuss in the video. So make sure you download the pictures and check them out. 
So the grinding process is very similar to what I did with my uh, Threadripper CPU, also very similar to what I did with the Broadwell eCPU. So the first thing we have to do is remove all the residues that are still there, basically the residues from the underfill and also the solder bumps. After removing most of the residues with the 40 micrometer uh, grinding film, we can also zoom in by magnifying by 200 times and zoom in onto the solder bumps. Again, we can see very similar to what we got on the package. You can see a radius of 0.04 millimeter equals 0.08 millimeter diameter. So it's extremely small and also a pitch of 0.13 millimeter. If we keep grinding a little bit more, we can see that mostly the solder bumps are coming through. It's like a, a silver shiny surface now and most of the underfill and the, all the other residues are now gone. After a few more minutes I noticed that most of the solder bumps are now coming off and underneath the solder bumps there seems to be some kind of a black layer but I think the black layer is essentially what, what's around the solder bumps and if we zoom in we can see that the black stuff is actually kind of around the solder bumps and you can see at this position it's 220 times uh, magnified. You can see the distance is actually quite small but you can see where at a position where the solder bumps were originally we can now see a copper layer coming through. So after grinding for around another 10 minutes we can see that there is a nice copper layer coming through. So we can see a lot of rectangles and those are essentially the cores and also the memory controller which we will see later in a much more detailed view. Again if we zoom in by uh, 200 times to the copper connection layer we can see very very small copper traces and those copper traces should essentially be connected to the solder bumps which we just removed. So after grinding a little bit more and removing most of the copper structure, we can now see some kind of, it's, it's still a little bit of copperish, more like a goldish structure. And now it's time for etching. So etching is a little bit more complicated. It takes a little bit more effort. So I have to set up all my etching stuff here and I will be back in a bit.